Hey guys, and welcome to my video where I'm giving a bit of a tour of this sketchbook that I've been working on since June. It's called The Adventurer's Guide to Fantastical Foods, Magical Meals, and Dangerous Dishes. It is a themed sketchbook, something that I normally don't ever do, ever, and it is themed because it is for the Bro Brooklyn uh, Sketchbook Museum in New York City. I'll be putting more information on that in the description. If you're interested, it's kind of like a library of sketchbooks you could go submit your own sketchbook for like a small price they'll send you one you fill it up you send it back they put it in their library you could go borrow books you could look at them online yada 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 it's really cool if you're an artist and you're interested in that kind of thing i mean so far i recommend it i haven't had any issues with the program itself yet but i haven't mailed this thing off yet so it's still here you know um this book i actually bound myself it is, I bound it myself, it's it's quite a mess. I've never bound a sketchbook before, but I, I tried with this one and this was my first one and it's supposed to be kind of rugged and torn up and beat up and stuff, so it, it fits with the theme, I guess. And I, I just wanted to give a tour of it before I send it off into the depths of like New York City and into USPS. A lot of Twitch viewers have been asking me to, you know, just record a video or do scans and stuff of it. And I did scan it in and now I'm now I'm giving a little bit of a tour. Inside flap, um, I put in here, got my socials, date I did it, and I have a table of contents that I made that is honestly a bit messy because I, I messed it up over here, but that's all right. And by the way, I'm gonna be going through every single page in this sketchbook. I'm not gonna sk skip like anything, so. If this is a longer video, I apologize. I'm not gonna read any of the stuff on the sides though. I'm just gonna kind of talk about the art and the process of making the art rather than really, you know, talking about, I guess, the <laughs> the lore. <laughs> but I have my I have my preface, preface, however you want to say it over here in my table of contents that, you know, I have fucked up because uh, I'm, I, I, yeah, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> My my first uh, two pages that are illustrated here are cooking tips for travelers and I have all kinds of funky stuff like tools and tool explanations and uh, finding your the knife for you and I drew here kind of I guess what would be my dream knife if I were to get a really nice chef's knife which I, I do want one so bad. This is the kind of knife that I would get. Obviously, I can't find elvish steel here in, in the US, but, you know, one day I'm sure. Um, and these kind of tinier pages, there's a lot of different types of paper that I used for this sketchbook. This is Bristol paper right here, and I used it for mostly like the colored pencil stuff and the ink stuff, and stuff that is a little bit heavier, but not too heavy. You'll see later on that some of the pages are extremely thin, and thus I couldn't do much with but I, I kind of do little sketchy stuff here and there. And um, on my Instagram, you won't get to see these pages. I won't be posting pages like this on my Instagram. I'm only gonna be posting the watercolor illustrations that you'll see in a moment. Here's more Bristol stuff. This is just bread. <laughs> it's not bread that exists, although it is bread that does exist. And I've kind of, I guess, given it a fantasy twist. Like for most of these, I've, I've taken, um, I've taken something that exists in real life and then uh, changed the name of it a little bit and made up some fake ingredients, etc, etc. The breads are really cool. This one's my favorite, I think. This bread is just so basic and I, I love it. Um, but yeah, those are the breads. And all the pages are stained by hand, by the way. I don't. Please don't think I'm like a mess. Um, I am a mess, as you can see probably from my table, but I'm not like a mess you know, like that. <laughs> I made it messy for on purpose. And here's our first uh, watercolor. I guess this is a spread as well. You know, this correlates to this. Um, this is the Harpy's Egg Sandwich. And uh, this was the first watercolor painting that we did in this sketchbook. And you could see the paper suddenly change. Spoiler for the other page to watercolor paper. This is really, really, really expensively thick watercolor paper. And I kind of just had it lying around and it didn't bind uh, too hot, but it, 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 you know, it made it in and it, it was so much fun to just have this inside of a book, this type of paper, it was great. And here's Harpy's Egg Sandwich. This I made with watercolor and a little bit of gouache 
and just a tiny bit of colored pencil, which is kind of what I use for all the watercolor illustrations in this book. And on the flip side of the page, I have um, on the Bristol side, kind of an explanation of of the recipe. And I drew a harpy's egg, made it up. You know, harpy's egg are different from normal eggs because they got speckles or something. I've never eaten a harpy egg. I've never seen a harpy. They don't exist, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe they're at the bottom of the ocean or something, I don't know. But that was the first watercolor illustration and it, it is it it is nice. It is a nice one to look at. And then we have over here two more illustrations back to back. And because they don't have the Bristol pages to the side of them, um, they kind of are just to the side of each other. And they are correlated a little bit, but most of the ones that are like this aren't. Um, this, this, this is still watercolor. Um, I really wanted to make this one look kind of bloodied around the uh, edges because it's a sea monster sushi. So uh, what I really did was just save images of salmon sushi and then make it uh, blue and plate it. So I have I have the rolls and the sashimi here and stuff and I have a little thing of so soy sauce and you know, how you know. <laughs> but it's really just regular sushi but I made it blue. Um, and I like this illustration except I feel like these are a little bit blobbed together sometimes like if I look at it from far away it looks like one mass of blue blue uh, fish but uh, you know I tried to separate them a little bit with a little bit of colored pencil but you know this might be one of the weaker paintings in here the calamari uh, I think it came out pretty decent it was this one took me like the least amount of time to make too it was really 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 quick I my only regret with the calamari is that I wish I had, I had made it a little bit more Kraken-like, you know? It kind of just looks like massive calamari rolls, which was, yes, what I wanted to go for, but at the same time, um, I wish I had themed it a little bit better. Here we have our seaweed salad. Siren seaweed salad. Most of these I wanted to kind of be, uh, whatever the word is for like when you have you know, letters that are the same and the in the first letter of the word is the same, you know, I don't know what the word for that is in the, in English, but um, I wanted most of them to, to kind of have that like Kraken Calamari, Sea Monster Sushi, got the two S's. Uh, this one has three S's. <laughs> I'm all over the place with the S's. I love this piece a lot. Um, it could be, a, it's like a little bit too, you know, just regular normal, but I feel like the painting here is pretty damn strong, you know? This is a really strong painting, in my opinion. <laughs> my professor would look at this and be like, no, wait, this is your weakest one, after I say that, but I really love how I rendered out just the seaweed in general, and then you could see later that I fucked that up with um, a ramen dish, so... <laughs> I, I could only nail it a few times, and the rice I, I kind of nailed a little bit too. And I included some of that fish in again. And over here I have a little bit of, you know, information on sirens and, and the ingredients of the salad, which are based off of, obviously, uh, real seaweed. For this I was kind of going for like, sirens harvest this special seaweed and then, and then they sell it to fisher towns and then they make the dish, yada yada yada, you know how it is. Here are, my, here are my meats. <laughs> I, I used these meats a lot later in the book too. Um, I, you know, it was good to have to have done this page early on because I, I would constantly reference it whenever I needed to add a certain meat to a dish and I never knew like what, what weird fantasy creature to use. I do have one fear with this page and that is that I've accidentally appropriated a culture's meat <laughs> or animal, per se. Like, um, there are some cultures that have mythological creatures that, you know, you kind of just don't want to touch or, you know, want to leave alone. There are a few really specific ones, and if that's the case for this book, you know, please just tell me and I will, um, you know, if I decide to make a zine of this, I will c cut it out or change the name or something. and or I'll just remove the page in total, who knows? Like, if I'm appropriating some kind of meat, <laughs> hit me up. You know, if I'm really not supposed to be killing uh, this cow creature that I, I can't really even pronounce, to be honest. I was just looking for a cow-like creature. Hit me up and I'll, I'll change it, I'll remove it. If 
I ever decide to, you know, sell it, I wouldn't want to have that in there. But I really like how these came out. These are really rendered really nicely in, in colored pencil. And the blood stains are honestly kind of dope, in my opinion. I have veggies here. This is one of those really small pages that I feel like I could have tried harder on, but there wasn't like a whole lot of time. This was a pretty time constrained project that I was working on here, and I, ha I had a heck ton of pages to do. Um, this one is a, a lesser offender of the damn, I rushed this page kind of thing, but it's still definitely up there with wow. Like, there's a lot of negative space that I could have filled with more vegetables and stuff, but to hell with it. I really like the cabbage here. I thought that was so clever that it, like, it's like a regular cabbage but cats really enjoy it as well, and, and you could tell that it's ripe when the ears flip up and they turn pink inside of the little the little cat ear, cabbage cat ears. That was fun. And then just massive fucking onions over here. <laughs> um, yeah, here's another offender. I mean, these are actually not that bad. Later on it gets real bad. With the really, really thin sheets of paper, this is still Bristol, you know, I still got stuff to, to work on. Some of the sheets of paper that I use for this book are really fragile, and I really couldn't do a whole lot for them, but this page is, isn't that bad at all, when you think about it, um, in, in retrospect, but I don't know. I do, I do like, I do like this, this, uh, this spread a little bit. This one's cool. Here's the ramen dish that I feel like I messed up a little bit. <laughs> I've painted ramen before. Um, and I think maybe that might be my best ramen painting for the rest of my life. Like this, I peaked back then when I painted that ramen bowl. Maybe I'll put an image of it on the screen or something, no promises, but it's on my Instagram if you want to see it. Um, I think that might be the best ramen that I've ever drawn. And this is kind of inspired by that ramen painting, except based off of the succubus, which is a demon. <laughs> And it's supposed to be like hellishly spicy, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, we another another case of having a watercolor piece over here and a Bristol piece over here. And the Bristol page is not really art too much, but more or less like details on this dish right here. Um, here, these two I really I really enjoy. I wish I had written more details on the sides. I don't really feel like it now. It's a little bit too late. I hope I hope to mail this thing out like tomorrow morning, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, Unicorn Trail ice cream, and this one actually has glitter in it. That may or may not have been an accident and then was like a miracle that I had remembered to put glitter on it. And then Halfling's Pesto Pasta, which whew, I really enjoy how light this painting came out. This painting I didn't use any gouache on and neither did I use gouache for this one. And that was one of my things that I wanted to try was I was, I felt like I was relying a little bit on gouache to kind of bring back some of the detail in a painting and I wanted to try to do it with just watercolor and it leads to quite a different effect. You know, you, I was after I had done this one, I felt like, uh, you know, I did a lot of gouache with this piece to try and bring back the details. And I feel like it kind of messed it up. <laughs> so for these two, I decided to just do the watercolor, and I like it. I like the the pasta a lot. I think it's very soft looking and just they're both very different pieces, but I I really enjoy them and the fade here and the cone and stuff. They're they're great. This one's fun. I don't think I use any gouache for this either, to be honest. Maybe I did around the uh, the whites up here, but I think this is all watercolor. Um, this is a ice golem mojito, and I wanted to do like one big mixed drink for the book. One big mixed drink. <laughs> That's how you say that. <laughs> I want to do one big mixed drink for this book and I picked mojito because uh, one of my favorite drinks alcoholically and this little ice cube that I drew here is probably the coolest ice cube I've ever drawn. Dare I say I peaked with this ice cube like the reflections are just fantastic for no apparent reason. I'm pretty sure I just scribbled this in and was like, oh my god, what did I just create? It's like the perfect little ice cube rendering. I don't know how I did that. Um, I could probably recreate it, but I learned something when I drew this ice cube. That's all I'm trying to say. The mojito looks great too. 
um, the little the little lemon or lime really down there and you know this this one this one was cool to make and it was super quick to make because you didn't want to add too much paint into this when I was painting it so I was trying to keep it kind of translucent and cleary and stuff and, and cloudy so it's not that many layers of paint but another case of having having the two pages next to each other to describe the the painting to the side of it you know <laughs> I like this page a lot. Um, the page next to it, as you can see, yeah, this is one of those pages I'm not gonna post on Instagram, so you can only see it if you were to come here and, and look at it directly. But uh, the toast page is perfect. Have different different toasts with their toppings here, and some of the toppings are related to different fantasy meats, cheeses, etc., etc. You know, I got min Minotaur mozzarella here. Um, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know how that would taste, but it was cool. I really like how I rendered these out. They look really cute to me, at least. Like, they look perfect little prop design pieces. This is chat, but it was interesting to do anyway. At this point, when I had done this page, I was kind of doing the pages out of order. This is our really thin paper. And the problem with this really thin paper is when working in a book like this, it's getting really damaged and there's not a whole lot I could put on it. If you know what I mean. I might just be making excuses, but really I'd had a lot of these thin sheets to fill up and didn't like the material and I just wish I had went with all Bristol, to be honest, and, and do less pages in general. It would have been way better next time. You know, I'm not going to use, next time I'm not going to use thin sheets of paper for my uh, sketchbook. I, the next sketchbook I make will be a personal sketchbook. It won't be themed or anything, but I'll be binding it myself. Again, hopefully not not too big of a fail this time. <laughs> but I won't. I probably won't be using thin paper like this. But here's some spice combos, and these are based off of actual spice combos that I personally use in my kitchen. They're quite common combos that you could use, and they each relate to spice combinations that are used in real life. I use them in my kitchen. I cook a lot. That's one of the reasons why I want to make this sketchbook is because I've recently fallen in love with cooking. After I got into college, I just started cooking. I need another hobby. So I cook a heck ton now. And these are spice combos that I do use. And you know, if you're, if you're looking for combos, there they are. Not that you could read the font that small on the camera that far away, but whatever. Here's, you know, more thin pages. Um, these are drinks. They are, in fact, drinks that do absolutely exist in real life. I just changed the name of them. And I did that for a lot of things in this book. Especially the tiny pages like these. I took something that existed and I changed the name of it. And I didn't do much else. So if you were, dare say, to mix these drinks, they would be actual drinks. Um, some of them you might even recognize. <laughs> but they came out pretty nice. I did definitely want a drink page and this is the drink page. More than sheet of paper. This, this one's really a wreck. <laughs> this page got super, super damaged and ripped up while, you know, just painting other pages. It got stuck together. I had to rip it apart multiple times. And that was the scary part about working on these pages. I didn't want to put any serious illustrations on these sheets because I was scared I would lose them. Like, they would they would just rip out on me. But here we have these edible flowers. And there are flowers that you can eat in real life. Except the, uh, the effects of them, I kind of made up in a fantasy sort of way, you know. You know, eating flowers is very fantasy, right? <laughs> Mushrooms, these are fun. This is in graphite. For once, I work in graphite. The only issue with the graphite is that it smudges and doesn't last you as long as you would like it to, but these were cool to work on, and some of these are really funky. Pan's Portobello, I mean, he's got little eyeballs. Like, that's kind of whack. <laughs> this one has eyes inside of the holes. And then this one has a gnome house on top of it. I'm like, how crazy can you get? The Enchanted Truffle is on fire. So these are funky. These are some of the funkier ones that I did. 
like in the tiny in the tiny sheets as creative as, as i'll get <laughs> um here's a page that i kind of just threw in uh this is my my uh, moon water kind of instructions that i do actually use when it comes to in real life slight witchcraft paganism stuff moon water isn't really witchcraft it's more just a spiritual creation <laughs> but this is real instructions on how to make real moon water if you're into that kind of shit you know google it it, it exists um here are teas these are real teas that exist except i've added a little a little a little uh you know twists to them like this one's Knight's Lavender, Leprechaun Lemongrass, Lover's Cherry, Cat's Tail Chai, Cantrip Chamomile. That's fun. Um, and they were fun to color in. They're like these little tiny little things. I just kind of really like how I drew them. They're they're like special. And I, this really this book has really made me want to get into prop design more. And I'm hoping that I can kind of make maybe like a small prop design portfolio in the future and you know that's in, that's in animation so if I'm ever looking to do something like this uh, long term I should I should you know I should just go for it because this is this is this kind of stuff has given me the uh, you know a taste of prop design and I kind of want to do more of it this this is one of my <laughs> this is a really weak spread <laughs> I could laugh at my own art okay and this spread sucks I think I drew this at the end of the road, really tired. It's probably at the end of one of my Twitch streams. If you don't know, I, I, I stream on Twitch um, Monday through Friday. As of right now, I stream Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. And I did this entire book on stream, and it was fantastic, but towards the end of like a, a six-hour stream, uh, you start getting really tired, and that's when I start to makes make some shitty mistakes like like this spread here these are real fire tips but you know they're not in any way like fantasy or anything and i wish that i had tried a little bit harder with them to be honest i wish i had you know stopped stream and left it for the next day or whatever but it's cool here we're gonna get into this in a moment um here are my knives i like this page a lot another one of those cases of Wow, prop design is really cool. I accidentally splattered onto the base, onto the bread knife, but that's okay. Still got the point. These are really fun to draw and quick to draw too. Knives are fun to draw because of the 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 shadows on them are kind of interesting, and it's fun to try and render those shadows out in a sort of simplistic, cartoony sort of way. And then you have something like this, and I'm gonna explain this. First of all, I really wanted to have one big page that's blobby and gooey like this. That's not what we're going to talk about. We're not talking about the splat in the middle of this page that infected many pages before and after it. We are going to talk about the page number. I go from 40 here to 50. So I've decided to just leave it that way. And that is because I just don't care. <laughs> I, I care, but... Maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll add some weird lore and I got another page back here about how a dragon ate the 10 pages that are missing and there's a reward if you find them or something and maybe I'll do a little treasure hunt online, draw 10 more pages or something and I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna go that far. That would be fun though, but probably not gonna go that far. Anyway, I just want to say I'm missing 10 pages. That's why I messed up the table of contents here is because I forgot I was missing 10 pages and I absolutely am missing 10 pages. And that's why I'm missing them is right there. So here we have Enchanting for Shafts. This was one I was looking forward to doing, but it was a little bit rushed again, even though the concept wasn't rushed, the concept was fully fleshed out in my mind. But when I was sitting down and getting ready to do these pages, I must have been a bit tired because it does look a little bit rushed. And it is, once again, on that disgustingly thin paper. But the concept is you enchant a cooking item and it does the cooking kind of for you or the small cooking tasks for you. You don't want them to do the big cooking tasks, right? But you know, it does the small stuff. This is my weakest page. Um, I had this idea for this uh, avocado cat in my head. And I put it on the page. And then this page 
is a bleed through sheet page. I don't know. Some this these two pages are. I mean, there's nothing on this page. <laughs> this is my weakness here, um, and you know, things that I need to improve in myself are the desire to draw for more than six hours and to to how to keep stamina through six hours and not get tired at the end of it. But this page, I like the concept and maybe I'll work more on it. If I make a zine of this, I am going to go and rework a lot of these smaller pages. So if I decide to sell this via like a Kickstarter and get it printed or something, that's what a lot of people are wanting me to do right now. I will absolutely try to do that. And I will redo the pages like this digitally and stuff and have them fleshed out. It includes pages like this, herbs for witchcraft that was kind of a messy set of pages. The paper was really disagreeing with me here and and here. It was honestly a bit of a screw up that I, that happened. I don't know, these things just happen and the paper just stopped stopped fought me on the markers. But I'll talk a little bit more about it. I, I they're basically just herbs and I and I gave them attributes for witchcraft which are kind of legit, to be honest. I know a little bit about witchcraft myself, and not not like evil, scary witchcraft, but you know, pagan witchcraft. And this is kind of legit stuff that you could actually do with herbs. Here's an interesting one. Um, this is not a watercolor paper. This is a Bristol sheet, and I wanted to do a bigger illustration on a Bristol sheet. And I wish I'd done more of these rather than the weird pages, but here we have Fairy's Roll Cake, which is a real, based off of the real cake, the roll cake. <laughs> and then I have a little sweet soda back here, but this one was cool. I have the all the different ingredients, the, ma the major three ingredients listed over here that make it special, which is fairy dust sugar, angel wings candy, and blueberries of the blue moon. I thought that was fun. This was fun to draw. I drew this one off stream, I think, <laughs> as far as I know. But it was a it was a heck ton of fun to do, and it came out great, and I like it. And I like how I can paint letters like that. I'm getting good at that. Got even better at it right there. Here's my dragon's tail stew. This one is based off of an absolutely, absolutely real recipe that I myself make as well, um, which is oxtail stew. If you've never had oxtail stew, it's a Caribbean dish made with oxtail, and it's a stew, and you usually serve it over rice, but here I just have it in its stewy, gooey form that's normally in the pot. Um, oxtail is one of my favorite dishes of all time, especially my favorite Caribbean dish of all time. And I cook it. I think I cook it amazing, and I had to, absolutely had to paint it with dragon tail, because I thought that's dope. So it's, it's, you know, made with dragon meat and then orcish butter beans, which the dragon's tail is massive compared to like an ox tail in my mind. And then the, the beans are also huge. So this is like ox tail stew, but maybe like three times the size of regular. It's just huge. And I really like how this painting came out. And I think I use a little bit of gouache here. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I went back to my gouache. To my gouache usage, if you will. But I really enjoy this painting and I didn't really draw anything over here because you have this fantastic painting to the right of it. You don't really need anything over here that much. I could have drawn a dragon if I really wanted to, but I didn't. And we're getting towards the end of the book and the ending is, is kind of a bang, I feel, of art, you know. Lots of, lots of bigger pieces here at the end. This is the King Burger. It's just a burger, but made with ingredients from different pages in the book. We have that cow creature, catoblapas, catoblapis, catoblapas. I had to try to pronounce it at least once while recording this, honestly, but I don't know how to pronounce it. And then we have the orcish onion, which is like just massive onions. And then the spiced king's bread that I mentioned on my bread sheet. And that basically culminates into a meal that is quite expensive to make. So I figure this is a burger that is served at royal and noble events. Very pricey burger indeed. And uh, this has to be one of the most 
appetizing paintings I've ever done. None of this is gouache at all. This is all watercolor and it just looks delicious. It's also one of the last ones that I did, but it looks, in my opinion, probably like one of the best. It just looks really, really great. And then I have this cake. I don't think I did the cake last. I think these are in order of when I did them now. This is leprechaun cake. I like this one a lot. It's basically just a mint cake. Um, nothing too, too special about it, except for the mint is leprechaun's mint, which I mentioned earlier in the in the book here. So now I'm now I'm using ingredients, you know, I'm making these recipes sort of. I like how this came out as well. This is, in my opinion, like one of the more simple paintings. Just separate layers, not too much shading going on. It's very, uh, very basic, like cartoony kind of style. The burger is a little bit too, but the burger's a little bit more rendered. Like the onions are rendered and the burger's rendered, etc. The cheese is rendered. This is more just like chunks <laughs> filled in. As one does with cartoon stuff. I didn't really render too much anything in this cake, but it still came out looking pretty good, in my opinion. Monster Mash Meat Pizza. This one was fun and also a pain to draw. Pizza isn't a pain to draw. It's thinking of like what you want to put on the pizza to make it fantasy that is hard to draw. Cheese is always fun to draw, but I decided to use on the pizza, different types of ingredients from earlier in in the book. We got the jackalope salami, we got that cow thing, pepperoni, we got hippogriff sausage and magic mushroom, and which affects wear off upon cooking. <laughs> Sorry guys, can't get high from eating the uh, pizza, but I thought this is like a cool piece. Like when I was when I was drawing and I was thinking about that that thing from that that food from Stardew Valley that you like eat when you go into the cave it's <laughs> like really fuel up this is one of those things that you'd eat like right before a battle to get like tons of tons of add-ons onto your onto your stats and stuff before you fight you know to really power you up or whatever <laughs> but it looks it looks delightful i think and it's quite colorful i wish it was a little bit more colorful i think it might be missing um what color? What color is it really missing? Other than green. Maybe it could have used a little bit of green. Who knows? Here's our last food illustration, and I will absolutely turn this one uh, sideways. I know it's a surprise. I do have one, one singular drawing in here that is sideways, and it is this one, and it is the dragon banana split. I hated making this one sideways because all of them had been vertical. The entire time but i really wanted to pursue this little idea of the carved banana dragon in the in the split with the uh with the sword coming out i thought it was fun and you got the little strawberries as the wings and stuff i'm like that's a dope idea i really want to do that and there was only really one way to do that and that was sideways so we went landscape for this one and i like it in my opinion i think it came out really really sweet and i wish i would draw more with colored pencil it's just quite time consuming. <laughs> Colored pencil is really time consuming and it could get really, really annoying really, really fast. <laughs> but here's our dragon banana split. And uh, last page that's that, one that I finished in this book was a uh, drawing of Buzz because I he's my Dungeons and Dragons character that I currently play as right now. And he's a chef and a butcher. And the book was kind of inspired a little bit by him or he was inspired by the book i don't really know they both came into like as ideas in my head kind of at the same time so really they they were co-created at the same time <laughs> but i figured this is his textbook that he adds notes into etc and and uses it on his own journeys and maybe he got it while he was at culinary school and has been using it since even though he dropped out of culinary school i thought that was just in general a cool idea to use. So I just did a quick uh, drawing with him with Posca. This is not gouache or anything, it's just Posca. Um, it came out great and that's the last page, guys. I mean, that's that's kind of it. I don't know what else to say except 
thank you for uh, stopping by and, and looking at it. And if you want more info on the Sketchbook Museum in Brooklyn, just especially if you're near New York City or New York, I'm in New Jersey, so I could absolutely go visit it you know, whenever I'm in the city, which isn't that infrequently. And if you're, if you're nearby or not even nearby, you just want to do it, go check it out. It does cost a little bit, but in my opinion, if you have the money, it might be worth it to help kickstart a little creative endeavor and, I don't know, do a theme or something or don't do a theme. Go on the website, check it out. This book was a ton of fun to do. It was also very exhausting to do. And it was also kind of my summer vacation to do this book. I sort of had this book <laughs> during the summer and was doing it for that whole month. I was not drawing anything else but food. I was like, I'm taking a break from the anime art, the character-based art, everything. I'm taking a break from it just to draw food. And this is how it came out. I think it came out good. And if you want to see me draw more, it might not be too much food-related stuff for now. Um, but if you'd like to see me draw and see more of my stuff, first of all, like, subscribe. I hope to post more on YouTube soon. And second of all, go check out my Twitch. I stream so much on Twitch now, it's crazy. I'm, I'm full-time right now, and we draw all kinds of crazy stuff. I got free art for subscribers every month going on. Right now, I don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> a big hurricane took out my Wi-Fi uh, last week. I haven't had Wi-Fi since, so that's why I'm recording this. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to post more stuff here, and I'm always, always on Twitch. Thank you guys for coming and looking at my little sketchbook tour. Wow, I finally get to say that. I've never done a sketchbook tour before in my entire life, but hopefully maybe we'll get another one in the future. Who knows? Thank you so much. I'll stop slamming the table with my hands. I will see all of you soon, whether it be on Twitch or on YouTube here or anywhere else. Please, you know, just let me know what you think of my art in the comments. If you have any critique, any, any advice you want to give me as a student or you're looking for your own art advice or you just want to say hi, leave me a comment, leave me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more of it. I'm always down to post more if people are interested and... Thank you so much for vibing with me. I hope you guys all have a good time for from now until next time I post. Catch y'all later.